During our two previous trips to Yukon in 2007 and 2008, we wanted to visit the historic town of Fort Selkirk. Because Fort Selkirk is located along the Yukon River, it is easily accessible to the many canoeists who paddle down the Yukon River. However, Fort Selkirk is not so easily accessible to those of us who are traveling by road, or so we thought. During our third visit to Yukon in summer of 2019, we camped at the historic site of Minto, also located along the Yukon River. In Minto, we met a lady who was working to prepare lunches for a tour bus visit. She was a member of Selkirk First Nation. As we chatted about Fort Selkirk, she calmly said, You know, you can arrange a boat ride to Old Fort Selkirk by asking at the band office located in Pelly Crossing. And bingo, that is what we set out to do. In this video, I share some of the highlights of the old historic village of Fort Selkirk. And as an added bonus, there's a fiery surprise at the end. Enjoy the tour. Our journey to Fort Selkirk began at the campground along the Pelly River. The campground and the community of Pelly Crossing are located where the Klondike Highway crosses the Pelly River in the traditional territory of Selkirk First Nation. The area is in the homeland of the Northern Tuchcon First Nation culture. In 2019, the campground was free and managed by the Selkirk First Nation people. The campground is located within easy walking distance of the local museum called Big Jonathan House, where you can learn more about the local culture and see a few artifacts. To find out if we could charter a boat ride to Fort Selkirk, I visited the Selkirk First Nation Administration Office. There I met Terry Lee Isaac, Heritage Manager for Selkirk First Nation. After a discussion of the many projects underway, Terry Lee kindly arranged transportation to Fort Selkirk. Terry Lee instructed us to wait for a boat at Pelly Farm, located on the Pelly River, about 50 kilometers away to the west, along an old, narrow road. Early the next morning, we left Pelly Crossing and followed the instructions to drive to Pelly Farm, located about 50 kilometers west from Pelly Crossing. I admit the road was exciting and narrow in places. I kept wondering who would take the ditch first if we met an oncoming vehicle, but fortunately, we did not meet anyone else along the road. At Pelly Farm, we parked and waited for the boat. Franklin, the experienced boat driver and his crew arrived shortly afterwards using the Pelly River as his highway.
After loading some lumber onto the boat, we headed off to Fort Selkirk. The boat trip lasted about 30 minutes and provided many interesting sights along the Pelly River. Where the Pelly River joined the Yukon River, we could see Fort Selkirk, located on the west side of the Yukon River. We were almost there. Fort Selkirk is an important historic site, located along the side of the Yukon River and surrounded by mountains. Selkirk is central to the homeland of the Northern Tushkun indigenous people. It was a traditional harvesting and gathering site for thousands of years. The English name, Fort Selkirk, was given by Robert Campbell of the Hudson Bay Company, who established a trading post here in 1852. The role of Fort Selkirk as a hub of land, river, and later air transportation existed until about the 20th century. In addition to the historic gathering place by First Nation people, Fort Selkirk evolved into a more permanent community in the early 1890s with the establishment of a trading post, an Anglican, and a Catholic mission. The community grew quickly as thousands of prospectors headed for Dawson City during the Klondike Gold Rush in 1896. Fort Selkirk was also a base for the Yukon Field Force and the Northwest Mounted Police Post in 1898. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, Fort Selkirk was a place where Indigenous and European people lived and worked together. Fort Selkirk became less strategic in the 1950s with the construction of modern roads and the end of steam wheeler traffic along the river. As a result, many people moved away. However, members of Selkirk First Nation continue to think of Fort Selkirk as their ancestral home. Today, Fort Selkirk is jointly owned and managed by the Yukon government and Selkirk First Nation people.
In the photos of the visitor's campground, you likely saw that plume of smoke arising from the forest in the distance. In the course of about 30 minutes, a forest fire had erupted to the northwest of Fort Selkirk. Over the next hour, canoeists arrive and set up their camp, and we watched the forest fire grow. Then it was time to leave and head back to Pelly River by boat. As we passed under the smoke plume, it was the first time in my life that I had experienced forest fire weather. Despite the largely blue sky, it was raining soot from the smoke cloud, and I learned that forest fires do indeed create their own local weather. The visit to Fort Selkirk was fabulous. It is a special place that is lovingly being restored by Selkirk First Nation. Part of my message is simple. Don't be afraid to stop and ask for guidance from the local First Nation. They may help create a very special experience for you. As for the forest fire, we listened to the reports over the next few days as we traveled south. The fire was finally brought under control several days later. 